<clears throat> what up, what up? Come on in, 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 come on in. Come on in. Jordan, I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm dead. Come on in. Oh my goodness, God. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I'm, I'm, I'm killing the song, guys. And believe it or not, I just wrote it. I, off, the, off the dome, I'm coming up with the song. I don't know. Sometimes it's, it's a shame that some people are just so talented. I know. All right, all right, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Did y'all hear that? They heard it. Did anybody hear that? They heard it. Natalie's over here talking trash, man. She said, please, for the love of God and everything, please don't ever sing again. How is that the Christ-like thing to say? That's what I want to know. Can anybody hear me? Nobody's complimenting me and wondering why. Yeah, to, um... I hear you, Jordan. Oh. Hey, well, look. my mom always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me change the key then. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. How's that? How about lower? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Guys, I don't know. I feel the anointing all over my voice. I may have missed my calling. I may have supposed to be in a worship pastor. What do you think, Nat? Well, you're not the Lord. You don't know that. Navi gets in here. I might ask her if I can lead, lead worship this week instead. I got my set list. I'm ready. I'm going to sing Midnight Cry like Hayden sang. And I'm also going to sing that Fire from Heaven song like Emily sang. And then I'm going to sing my original song that I just created off my dome that y'all been hearing. Come on in to heaven. Come on in to heaven. Come on in to heaven. I know. I, I know, guys. I'm, I'm speechless right now. I know. I am too. I am. I, I didn't know I could sing so well. I'm listening to myself <clears throat> off someone's mic, and I'm hearing myself, and it's like, dear God, is that an angel? <laughs> I I've never I've never known what an angel sounds like until this moment. My man Titan, I know you won't leave me lead me astray. Be honest with me. How good does I sound? I'll just go from one to ten. You want me to lie or be honest? I obviously want you to be honest. Natalie, you need – you're not being an encourager. She said negative three. That is just beyond rude. Jordan, yeah. I don't know how, you're, I don't know how well you're going to take this, but I think it was a 10. I, see, thank you. That I was looking for 12, but thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you said one out of 10, so. <laughs> yeah. You know. 
and I and I'll only I can only can only count how many fingers I have. Yeah, I'd say like a five or six. Who was that? Yeah, I'm kicking you off, Catalyst. Whoever that was. Who that was, was that? Easton. Easton, you're gone. Bye. Okay. I was on it, so. Dude, I literally almost removed you from the the thing for real to be funny, and I was like, oh, <laughs> that might be good. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> I literally pressed remove and it, it said, Are you sure? And I was like, Ah, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny. That would have been funny. Oh, Lord. All right. Hey, let's go ahead and get started because <clears throat> I'm, I've been sick and I'm, I'm ready to take some medicine and go to bed. Um, how's everybody doing, first off? Y'all talk to me. This is y'all's time. Hey, and if you're able to, I'd love to see your face. If you're, I know some of you guys aren't able to. I'd love to see your face if you're able to. Uh, you don't want somebody... to see my face. What would you say, Omega? Said you don't want to see my face. Oh, I want to see your face. Yes, I do. Don't be scared. We see it in real life. Not from where I came from. Where'd you come from? A party. The streets, man. The streets. Grew up in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. Oh, Pastor yes. Jordan, I do have a question. What do we yes. put for last week for the Catalyst meeting? Uh, make make this week last week. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, just yeah. yeah. Uh, it was I I'd recorded something and I thought I sent it and then Lexi texted me. I think like on Saturday and was like, "Hey." Yeah, I texted you and then I never got anything. I was like, "Okay, it's got to be my phone." And then I was gonna yeah. ask you about it yesterday and then I forgot. <laughs> yeah, and I I was like, I'm pretty sure I sent. And I went back and looked and I was like, nope. I, I did not press send. So there we go. Yeah. <clears throat> oh well. It's all right. We've got a week off. Um, so any, somebody tell me about your week real quick. Anybody want to share any testimonies, any cool things that's happened? Lexi, share some share what you shared at Sunday school. I thought that was really cool, if you don't mind. Okay. Well, um, it was actually I don't remember what day it was, but it was in art class. <laughs> Um, there were two girls and they were talking and they sat at my table and they were talking about, um, their like home situations and how one of them, their parents like basically abused them. So now there's, now she's living with her sister and, uh, her husband and it's just a whole ordeal. And I was just sitting there listening. And for the first like 20 minutes of class, I was just kind of praying. I was like, God, like, please like tell me something, give me something to say or give me the opportunity to say something. And, um, they kept talking and then, um, like I felt some say, like, just tell them what he is to you. Like tell, tell them what, how he changed you. Yeah. And so I just, uh, I kind of went on and on and on for like five, 10 minutes, but, um, one girl, she was talking about how she, um, uh, she, she said, I come from a Christian family and she was smiling the whole time. But then she said, uh, then I said, Oh, what, what church do you go to? She said, I, well, the churches I go to are in Arizona and I only go during the summer. And so I was like, uh, then I kind of kept going about what Jesus was to me. And then I kind of snuck in there. There's a fan and there's a follower so that she would kind of realize like, you're not on the same wavelength with what I'm saying. And so, uh, I mean, going to church isn't everything, but like, uh, she was talking about how she, she doesn't do very good things to this other girl. And so I heard that and I was like, this isn't the same thing that we're talking about. And so I just tried to, I guess, plant that seed and I invited them to church and I told them, uh, it's behind it's the church behind sonic on race street yeah and um they, they're talking about how like they might and stuff but i'm gonna keep trying to get them there oh, i love it are either one of them your one or part of your three that you're changing yes um one of them uh, well one of them is um the other girl's just kind of like a bonus i got i love it i love it <laughs> hey by the way she said something about she didn't go to church or whatever and and y'all can just write this. This is a freebie, okay? Hey, uh, we know you don't have to go to church to go to heaven, right? But mm-hmm. and you don't have to you don't have to have a parachute to jump out of an airplane either. But it sure does help. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> good point. So, uh, I got uh, everybody else. Anybody have any yeah. testimonies or good things? I got some good things. So yeah. this week, while 
I kind of consider like I have my three ideas of people, but I kind of consider the whole wrestling team is just one, yeah, one because they're they're all in deep need. Yeah. Um, so I, but I was able to spend the whole weekend with them, and so uh, there was lots and lots of conversations. <laughs> I could point out one after the other where they they would actually bring up Christ or something or a question they had about the Bible. Um, around me or to me and asked me. And so I was able to um, talk to a lot of them multiple times about different questions they had and um, kind of share my faith and share what I believed and um, challenge different, I, I guess, ideas that they, philosophies they had that kind of had them thinking. And then um, in particular, I had, I was like praying for like half the team before all their matches. So by, um, by the last day, I had just about everyone on the team coming up to me and asked me to pray for them before oh, come their on, matches man. started. Let's go. So I was getting, we were a good praise report. They were all, uh, they yeah. were one prayer for sure. So dude, that is, that's really cool. Really cool. Awesome. Two great, great testimonies. Anybody else real quick? Speak now, forever hold your peace until after the lesson. <laughs> awesome. Hey, let me just tell you all this real quick. I know most of y'all, if not everybody, as I'm going through and looking, um, did something last night. Just about everybody did something last night uh, at the Fine Arts Theater. Let me just tell you, y'all killed it. Not just your performance-wise, but how you you just anointed everything you did. Um, and everything pointed to Jesus. I was just incredibly proud, and I'm pumped for this weekend. We're gonna we're gonna run the table, baby. We're running the table. So y'all see the schedule I sent out? It's we're jam packed, but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be lots of fun. Cool. <clears throat> hey, well, let's get started. Um, sorry about last week's lesson. Um, it was a good break for everybody. I think uh, I think there's several of us that had the flu. I was very sick and very miserable. So uh, sorry about that. I'm still kind of getting over it. If you can't tell. Um, <clears throat> speaking of. Uh, but here, hey, what we're talking about tonight is another one of our core values. Um, servant leadership is our identity. And we've kind of talked about servant leadership being a SOA, I think, like week two of this catalyst season, if you go back. Um, but this is we're, we're going to take a kind of a different route, sort of, kind of. We're going to bring up SOA a lot. Uh, but servant leadership is our identity, OK, is what we're talking about tonight. So take some good notes. And make sure you keep up to date with the Google Sheets. That's a great resource for you. You may not realize it now, but I promise you, it's a great resource for you. It'll help you stay accountable. It helps, you, um, it helps me stay accountable with you to be able to know if you're getting stuff out of the lesson because, you know, sometimes we just you can randomly put something in there. And uh, since I taught it, I can, I can kind of tell if you're bullcrapping or not, <laughs> you know. Uh, so a great way to be able to uh, keep you accountable of just making sure we're growing together, right? Because if we're not growing... We're dying. We're dying. That's what I'm talking about. Zoom makes it a little awkward with the, the talk and wait for responses, you know. But, uh, hey, if we're not growing, we're dying. That's just it's plain and simple. And so as leaders, you guys are leaders. You're disciple makers. You're world changers. Um, we have got to make a decision to grow. And growth is not something that comes accidentally. You can write that down. Growth will never accidentally happen unless it's a weed. And if you want something to accidentally grow, it's going to be things you don't want to grow. Come on, right? And so if I want to grow closer to the Lord, I've got to be intentional. So uh, servant leadership is our identity. We talk about Mark 9, 33 uh, through 37 all the time. But write this down. You can read along with me. Um, the story where Soa comes from, servant of all comes from. Uh, this, is the, this is Mark 9, starting in verse 33. It says this. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, Jesus... He asked them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent for on the way. Uh, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. This is just a really funny story. And he sat down and called the 12, the disciples, the apostles. And he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last and must be a servant of all. So this story, the disciples, the disciples are walking right behind Jesus, the son of God, the Messiah. And they're talking amongst themselves about who is the greatest among them. You imagine John being like, hey, Peter, you suck. I'm better than you, bro. You know, now Andrew's like, yo, no, I'm better. Obviously, I'm the best, man. Judas is like, yo, hey, y'all got any money? <laughs> you know, and they're just talking amongst themselves about who's the greatest. 
And Jesus is right there. I, I just, it's so, it's so silly to me, man. Uh, they're talking about who's the greatest. And Jesus, the ultimate disciple maker, obviously, sits them down and realizes it's a great opportunity for a lesson. And he doesn't scold them. He doesn't like, hey, you idiots. He just, hey, y'all come sit down. Listen, guys, if you want to be great, and, there, and it, realize he never says there's anything wrong with wanting to be great. All right, catch that. Because I think greatness is something that we, God has built inside of us to want to achieve. It's, it's when it gets misaligned that we end up like Lucifer uh, rather than, uh, you, you know, like disciples. Lucifer wanted to be great, but he wanted to be greater than God, right? We as Christians should want to be great, but we should want to uh, reflect the greatness of God. There's a huge difference there, okay? And there's a, it's inside of us to want to be great. We should want to be great. Excellence is our spirit, amen? We talked about that last time. And so he doesn't scold them for wanting to be great. He just says, listen, if you want to be great, you have to be, you, you, you can't desire to be first. You've got to be last and you have to be a servant of all. The path to greatness, the path to being a great disciple maker, the path to being a great leader, the only path to being a great disciple maker and a great leader is the path of being a servant of all. Servant leadership must be who we are, not just something I do, not just something I do on Wednesdays or Sundays or when people are around, my youth pastors are around, my tribe leaders are around, my parents are around. It must be my identity. I am a servant leader. What, somebody unmute their, your mic and tell me, when you get to heaven, if you make it to heaven, obviously, I hope we all make it to heaven, what is it that, that God is going to say to you before you enter the gates of heaven? Well done, my well good done. and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful, what? Servant. Servant, right? He isn't going to call us by our name. Notice he doesn't say he's going to call us uh, anything other than what? Servant. He's not going to say, well done, my good and fa faithful pastor. Well done, my good and faithful math teacher. Well done, my good and faithful president of the United No, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is the only pathway to greatness. Oh, it's so countercultural, man. And this is one of those lessons it's tough to hear because it's we all want to be great, but the only way to become great is to be last. Um <clears throat> Let me just ask you all this. Have you ever seen um, servant leadership on display? And if you have, unmute your mic and, and, and tell us about it. A time that you've seen servant leadership on display. Lawson did the dishes the other day without being asked. Come on, Lawson. That's what I'm talking about. My first thought was Dante because he would always offer to do things. And like when he was in the youth group, he was kind of over like the tribe that cleaned up after things. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Who else? Um, I, long story short, I, I heard a speaker that talked about how he went to a church that was uh, like 60% complete poverty. And so he would spend hours before church in his own car, driving from a different people's houses, loading his car up, going back to the church and unloading them and go back out and get as many people as he could hours before every service so they could all make it. That's awesome, man. I love it. Serving leadership. All three of those examples, uh, when you guys hear that, a couple of them are, personal uh, people that you know really well does that make you think any less of that person or does that make you think more of that person more less or more more, more. Well, even though they they made themselves last for some reason you thought more highly of them they gained more influence in your life uh, dude it, that's the path man you ever watched the mandalorian anybody ever watch the mandalorian I just called I up. This I is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Yes, it, it is the way. 
right? If Jesus was set, was on the set of the Mandalorian, instead of this is the way of gr- getting foundlings and all that kind of stuff, it, the way is servant leadership. It, it is the way. It is the only way to be great, okay? Servant leadership. So a couple of things you can write down, okay? This is just a practical lesson. We're just going to be talking tonight. If you're too big to serve, you're too small to lead. You've probably heard me say that a million times, but if you're too big to, to serve, you're too small to lead. If someone asks you, hey, can you pick up that trash? You're like, uh, can you not find someone else? I'm, I'm like the leader of this. I'm, I'm the leader of this squad. You shouldn't be over that squad in the first place. You know what I mean? Hey, if you're too big to serve, you are way too small to lead. It's humbling, but it's, it's the truth. Too, if you're too big, I don't know. Everyone serves, you know, we, we've got to serve, whether you're in the parking lot, the pulpit, we're all serving. Um, if you ain't helping, you ain't helping, right? Um, if you want to be a great servant leader, stop focusing on what you can get and start searching for what you can give. It's not about what I can get. It's about what I can give. What can I give? That's what servant leaders are focused on. What can I give? <clears throat> And as we serve, man, we're actually going to lead. Um, I, can't, I, I can't lead unless I first learn how to serve, right? So when it comes to serving, when you, you think of Jesus, how he's talking about being a servant of all, um, it's, it's just practical ways of life, man. It's not, we're not necessarily, we're not talking about, being on a worship team, right? Those of you guys that are on the worship team with Abby, um, you know, Abby leads, she's serving as the, the squad leader. You guys are serving, uh, being a part of that team, but that's not what we're, that's not the extent of serving. Serving, that, that, if the only time you ever serve is on stage, you ain't serving. Come on, I'm performing. If the only time you ever see me right? Serving is when I'm preaching or I'm, I, I ain't serving, I'm performing. And dear God, what, what a scary place to be. Hopefully you, you see me setting the bar. I, I want to be the one that I want y'all to be able to look to me as Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, uh, that you see me the one picking up the stuff. I don't have to do that, but hopefully you see that. Hopefully you see that in other leaders and hopefully the disciples that you guys are going to make see that in you, Right? If the only time I'm serving is when someone can see me, I, I ain't serving. I'm, I'm performing, you know. Um, I, for those of you who feel called in the ministry, something I, I tell those called in the ministry all the time is um, I've got to fall in love with people before I fall in love with the pulpit. They'll preach, man, right? Um, if I fall in love with the pulpit before I fall in love with people, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a proclaimer of the gospel. I'm a, I'm a performer, right? Um, that's all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just doing it so you can see me servant leadership, servant of all being last. And you think about this in a line. Okay. Um, if we're walking in a line and Jesus says, you don't need to be first, you need to be last. Okay. If we're all walking in line, the person in the last, in the, the furthest spot of the line, no one sees what they're doing. They're doing things behind the scenes. They're, they're coming in the caboose. That's kind of what servant leadership needs to be where, man, it doesn't matter if anyone's around or not. We're coming in behind people, right? We're, we're, we're cleaning, we're, we're serving, we're whatever I've got to do to help build the kingdom of God, I'm going to do it. Whether it's cleaning, whether it's picking up tables, whether it's at home cleaning dishes like Lawson did this week, right? Whether it's like Dante, who would serve all over the place, he would do anything anyone asked him to do. That is what servant leadership is. It's leading from the back. Y'all with me? It's, it's not up front all the time. It's not, hey, I'm doing this so you can see me. It's I'm leading from behind. And Abby, I, I'm going to put Abby on the spotlight for a minute. One of the reasons she is such an incredible worship leader, and this is I'm not talking about just talent because we all know she's one of the greatest singers in the world. Come on, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm being honest. Girl, you can sing, sing, right? Talented, anointed. One of the reasons she's one of the greatest worship leaders um, I've ever seen, and not just at her age, is because even if she's not on stage, if she's in the pulpit or uh, in the pews, wherever, man, she is worshiping the Lord from her seat just as much as she would be if she was on stage. You know what I'm saying? 
And that right there is an example of servant leader. She's leading from behind, right? And so that's what servant leadership is. It's even when people aren't looking at me, I'm, I, there is no change. And here's a, here's a question you can ask yourself. I know not everybody gets on stage and all that stuff, but a question you can ask yourself, is there a difference in my worship when I'm on stage compared to when I'm in my seat? You know what I mean? Uh, y- y- y'all follow me? Is there a difference in how I serve? Like if someone was around looking at me, I would pick that trash up. If no one is around and I walk right past it, have I been serving or have I just been doing it so people could look at me? Come on, man. It's tough questions we got to ask ourselves. This is servant leadership. Even if no one else was around, I lead from behind, not because anyone's looking at me. So I'll get the chasing the cloud or whatever. I'm doing it because this is what Jesus has commanded me to do. He first served me the least I could do. Everything I do when I serve, I'm not serving it for you. I'm serving it under the king. Come on, man. I, he's watching. I do it as, as, for an audience of one. Y- y'all with me? Y'all hearing my heart? Okay. <clears throat> so practically, um, let, let's talk about it. I'm going to give y'all the floor. What are some things practically you can do to serve, even when no one's watching? What are some practical things that you can do to serve, to be a servant leader? Because realize, I, I cannot be an effective disciple maker if I'm not a servant first. That makes sense. Y'all go ahead. Start at home, because what? Because like, if you're not going to do it at your house, how are you going to do it outside? Come on, man. I love it. No doubt. All right, who else? Come on. If we aren't going to take the small steps to reach someone, how are we going to take the big steps? No doubt. Good word. Good word. Um, start with something as simple as uh, just um, praying for them. Uh, they first came to my mind, spending your time uh, the later at your house and let them know they don't even have to know what you have to do you don't have to let everyone know that just yeah spend your time doing what you can for them yeah no doubt man good work what else what are some practical things we can do um start offering to help more like instead of waiting for somebody to tell you what to do go like you need to be that person that's like always asking what can i do to help yeah absolutely Absolutely. <clears throat> Let me brag on somebody real quick. Ashley Coker. Girl, whenever we have anything going on, uh, I can always, without me even having to go ask somebody to come help us, Ashley is always the, one of the first people there to help us, whether it's, uh, whether it's when we were doing ice or even recently setting up tables, picking stuff up. And so, uh, Ashley, you are an incredible example of being a servant leader of doing things without asking. So just want to encourage you. I, I've been seeing that. What else? Any practical things we can do? Practical. Think practical. We should all have an answer for this. What, what's something you can do, whether it's your house, at, at home? Uh, well, that's the same thing, house and home, unless you got something. Yeah, anyways. School work at school, you can like raise your hand to volunteer for things and teacher needs something simple like taking something to the office. Yeah, no doubt. I love it. Even like what you were saying earlier about like just picking up trash and if someone like spill spills something or makes a mess, like helping them pick it up, like yeah. not just walking by and I mean ignoring the situation. Yeah, I love it. And Hayden Sutton, I don't know if you're on here, but Hayden is the one of the best people in the world I've ever seen at doing stuff like that. Whenever there is a spill or anything, he, he's, Hey, I'll go, I'll go get a broom. I'll go get my mop, something like that. And so that, uh, servant leadership, no doubt. What's something else we can do? Just something simple, like at your house, like doing laundry or dishes or things like that. 
Yeah, no doubt. What a great way to honor your mom and dad too, you know, to do that for them or um, everybody in your house will notice that. No doubt. I love it. Natalie this past week has taken it upon herself to clean out our whole uh, laundry room and she's been decluttering our house and uh, man, it makes us, I, I can't speak for Grizzly. I'm, I'm sure he feels love too, but it makes me feel so loved, you know, that, that she is, she's going above and beyond for us to serve us and to do that for us. Um, it just, it just, what a great way to, to serve, you know, she didn't have to do that, but she, she chose to. You're welcome. You're welcome, Natalie. She loves me. I love her. <laughs> I love it. Hey, so this week, I'm telling you, this is the path. This is the way, okay? This is the way. Servant leadership is the way, the only way to greatness. Um, I know we've been talking about this, and I've hinted at it a couple of times, but after fine arts, it's been so crazy on Sundays with practices and all that. Um, <clears throat> but after fine arts, we're going to really, uh, on Sunday afternoons, uh, we'll have you guys over, just y'all, um, all, pretty often you don't it's not going to be so much to where it's going to be overwhelming to y'all because i know we still have other practices and stuff uh but once a month at least we're, we're going to start having you guys come over and this will be leadership stuff on zoom uh but on those sunday afternoons uh, we're gonna we're gonna dig in deep to discipleship right and i'm just giving you a heads up if you can't serve you can't lead if you're called in the ministry full-time vocational ministry as, as some of you guys are if you can't serve you will not be effective. Um, you won't have a job very long. You know what I mean? It's it just, I'm just being straight up with you. This is one of the, the most important things we can do as servant leaders, disciple makers is being, it, it, servant leadership must be my identity, right? So this week, um, especially on the Google sheet, write down something practically that you did to, to go out of your way to serve, right? Um, and try to do something that, that no one's going to see, Right? um just and do it consistently do it consistently uh, I, i'm trying to think of who it was um i'll just i'll tell you this I, eddie boone is one of the best servant leaders behind the scenes servant leaders that i have ever seen in my entire life right he is constantly thinking of ways to just serve y'all serve the pastoral staff serve people in the church i was sick this past week and uh out of nowhere Man, he just came and uh, the whole youth staff, really, but he, he's the one that 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 ran the ball with it, that came and dropped off food for us while we were sick. Um, he'll do that for people in the church all the time. Just He's just constantly thinking of ways and trying to find ways he can serve people. And I, I'm just challenging you this week, man, focus on serving people as, as best as you can, because it's, it's the only way um, to being a, a great disciple maker. And uh, great leader. Amen. Y'all with me? Any final thoughts, comments? <clears throat> All right. Amen. Amen. Hey, I love y'all so much. Thanks for giving me 30 minutes of your time tonight. Uh, I'm excited for Wednesday. Can't wait to see y'all. And this weekend is fun, arts, baby. It's going to be dope. I love it. All right, love y'all, praying for y'all this week. Y'all know, y'all got my number, y'all ever need anything, y'all hit me up, all right? Let's uh, make sure you get back. Hey, let me just tell you this, one last thing. Um, Bible plan-wise, um, I would love for us, for you guys to set the example on the year-long Bible study, okay? Uh, if you haven't done it for three weeks, it doesn't matter. Just go to today's date, tomorrow's date, wherever, and let's just pick it up from there, okay? Uh, we probably won't do a youth, a youth, uh, you version devotional plan for a couple of weeks because I'd really want us to get into this. Pastor Rusty has really made this a uh, a priority. He wants us to to set the set the bar and and us uh, collectively as a church get through the Bible together in a year. So I challenge you tonight. It doesn't matter how many days you miss tonight, tomorrow morning. Uh, pick that back up. If you haven't joined it, text me and I can get you on it. And you just go to today's date. C Capiche? That sound good? Cool. All That's right. Good. Hey, I love y'all. Have a great week. I'm praying for you. Let me know if you have any, uh, you need anything at all. All right. Y'all have a great week. I will send out the recording to those that haven't seen this here in just a little bit. And deuces. Y'all have a good day tomorrow.